giraffe painting part three right we're going to start filling in um, a bit more color now and some details so I'm starting with the uh, dark parts of the inside of the ear which actually look very black um, so I'm using black it's very unusual actually to use just a, uh, a flat back black but it is very very dark there showing up on the inside of the ear As you can see, I'm sort of like pulling the wool round to try and make sure I get the shapes right. And then you're felting it down. Trying to get it as smooth as possible, but at this stage it's not um, crucial. And now I'm putting in a circle of black for, for the eye. The eyes are actually quite big, um, so I'm putting in a large piece of black. I rolled it into a bit of a ball before we, uh, before I started putting it in there, and mostly I'm needle felting it round the edges, um, so it's got a little bit of a bulge on it because it's an eye. It's completely round. It's not. Um, it's not flat so much, but uh, and we will be adding other things to the eye to make it look more realistic later on. And the eyes actually do seem to um, protrude outside um, of the face a little, so we need to bear that in mind when we're putting them in. Just um, defining some of the, uh, the lines, some of the uh, shapes with the needle by pulling the wool a little with the needle. Um, you can do this but be very careful because it's easy to break a needle when you're doing that. a matter of building up um, the, the different uh, parts um, with layers of colour um, and layers of wool. Changing, slightly changing that because the black was a little too big um, and didn't have the shapes in it that I needed so I'm just adding some little bits of um, color to change the shape of the black by putting the other color on top there so yep there we go so you can pull the uh, one color slightly to one side or you can put another colour over the top. 
Okay, and now the nostrils. I'm just adding the basic colour for the nostrils. And the nostrils actually extend up um, and slightly beyond the, uh, the snout there, so you need to bear that in mind. Trying to get them the right shape. Sometimes putting a, a, a thin um, piece around the outside um, is the easier way of changing the shape. Um, not always necessary, but changing the shape or adding a, a, light, a row of colour, which is what I've done there. Um, sort of highlights. And now I'm happy with the shape, more happy with the shape of the nostrils. So we move on to putting the black there in, in the centre. I'm just adjusting the shape of the black. And I'm completely happy with it. I'm not exceedingly happy with the right hand one, so my right. Um, so I will twiddle with it probably a little bit more later on. And now you'll see that I'm actually um, stabbing around the outside of the nostrils so that the, the wool on the back part goes further back. A little bit of work on the horns here, um, I've got a nice brown uh, tuft on the top and just slightly changing the shapes because they are quite curved and um, I'd had them fairly straight up until now. So just adjusting the shape. I've also added some um, highlights to the edges um, because they're fairly um, uh, sort of solid they're not like fur so um, when you've got something sort of fairly solid it catches the light um, better and you can see there we've got some highlights on the side still adjusting the shape there slightly and now some general tidying up with the uh, shape of the snout. Just gently pulling the wool into where I want it and then stabbing it. And here I'm trying to sort of make a line to delineate between the um, nose, the snout and the mouth, part of the bottom of the mouth, bottom lip, which is below it. So just uh, stabbing a bit deeper there to make that kind of line. We will later put some color, more colour into that. And you notice I'm pushing in from the sides around the snout um, because I want the snout to stand up higher than the uh, main part of the face because it gives more of an illusion of it coming forward. I mean you can do it all with shading and things like that but because this is needle felt and because I can I will actually make that sort of stand, literally stand out from the picture. So although my pictures are described as 2D pictures um, a lot of them do have this sort of three, 
three-dimensional um, elements to it. I'll do the same with that single horn in the middle of his head there, which I've added a little bit of highlight to as well there. So. <coughs> Okay, I'm just adding a little bit more here to the cheek um, because for some reason it doesn't look big enough um, because he's got his head sort of twisted on his neck. Um, I believe that that bit of cheek would actually stick out more and when I look at my picture that I'm working to, it does. You've got a lot more of that showing because that's where the, um, the spots go later and there wasn't enough um, of that cheek to be able to put the spots on so I've just added a little bit there which is why it's so easy um, to do because you can just add bits and to a certain extent you can take bits away as well although mostly I do prepare, pr prefer to cover things up rather than take them away um, taking them away can make it a little bit um, fuzzy, it can pull up colours from underneath and uh, so I mean it's, in, it's up to you which, um, which method you use but I do prefer to cover up rather than remove on the 2D pictures. When I'm making 3D models um, I will remove it but not so much on the 2D pictures. And now I'm putting a slightly darker um, brown line where I'd mark the mouth to sort of um, separate the, uh, the nose from the bottom lip there, or the top lip from the bottom lip, whichever way you want to look at it. You don't want a big thick black line, but you do want it to show. Now I'm slightly changing the shape of the bottom lip there and making it a little bit more pointed. Yeah, I decided to use a slightly darker brown, but I'm not using black. It's just a very dark brown. And there we are, we've just made his mouth. If you can, you'll notice I've got that line just a little bit thicker in the middle and tapering off to the outside edges. And when I'm doing the, the nose and the snout, I tend to push the needle from the side, which helps to lift it and give it that bit more 3D look. Um, just adding a few extra sort of slightly different colours, a bits of um, shading or light into him there. We've got a little bit of light shining on his, uh, on his nose. You just show that by using a lighter colour, slightly lighter colour of the same. Um, it's basically the same colour as underneath, but I added a little bit of white to it just to lighten it and give that sort of um, light. The, the light would hit the top of his nose um, there like that because it's uh, hard. There we are, just changing, slightly changing the shape of the face on this side. Um, I think possibly I made his snout a little bit too big, which is why we're running out of face to put the um, the spots on. But by just adding a little bit, it's it's working, working quite well. There we go. A little bit of dark brown down that side um, there and I will needle felt this down really firmly 
um, to try to get a lot of it to disappear. Um, and I've got to not disappear but go down into the wool because I'm trying to create a shadow. I don't want, you know, a cartoon type line. So um, I will need to cut that down quite a bit. But when we put other colours and, and the, the um, spots and things on that will fade into the background a little bit. But there's some, there is a shadow there. Slightly changing the shape of the eye. Yep, okay. He's coming along now, he's beginning to look more more cute. I do like my animals to look cute. A little bit of shadow there at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me. To uh, a bit of shadow that would show from his um, from his nose there, underneath. Because it's a shadow I don't want it too dark so I'm sort of spreading it out a little bit. Yep, just gently, gently, gently teasing it with my needle. That also, um, he's got a sort of a fat part of his face, the cheek, and then he's got this underneath piece which goes down to his neck. Um, so, and I'm putting a little bit of the same colour over the top because I want that line to be there and I want it to show, but I don't really want it to stand out quite so darkly. So I just use a little bit of the uh, colour underneath, the underneath colour, sorry, over the top to just... Um, fade it out a little bit and uh, that's what it's done as you can see it's still there you can still see it but it isn't just a dark brown line now and all the time I'm working on the pictures I will see something that needs just a little bit of tidying up or a little bit extra um, stabbing and uh, I will go and do that while I'm working this on other parts of the, uh, the picture. Once I get to this stage I'm actually working all over the picture in, in, at the same time. Um, I'm not just concentrating on one area. So I'm always looking over my picture to see what, um, what I need to do, what needs uh, changing. So. Well, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment and subscribe or support me on Patreon. Link down below. Thank you very much. <laughs>